thank you very much, um, Georgia. Their colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone. I wish to start by thanking my dear friend, Remy Rio, the CEO of the Agence Française de Développement for co-organizing this event with me and the African Development Bank. I'd like to thank you, Remy, in particular for your personal leadership on the Financing in Common Agenda, a remarkable effort launched to bring together public development banks providing $2.3 trillion in annual lending globally. Accounting for an estimated 8% of total investments globally, public development banks have a major role to play in accelerating development and the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Our gathering today is coming just ahead of the conference in Paris convened by President Emmanuel Macron to discuss financing for Africa. The African Development Bank is strongly supportive of public development banks. The African Development Bank's vision of this can be seen with the leadership role we play in establishing the Association of African Development Finance Institutions, the afri Exim Bank, the Trade and Development Bank, the West African Development Bank, the East African Development Bank, and several national and regional development banks all across the continent. Together, within the framework of financing in common, let us move forward boldly and strengthen institutional capacities and governance and financial capacity of public development banks. As public development banks, we must deepen our ability to reach all parts of Africa, to ensure financial inclusion, especially for the unbanked, and expand access to finance, savings and insurance products and services. We need to work as one unified system. A system that is able to source capital in the most efficient ways, taking advantage of the global and regional capital markets. A system that depends, that deepens domestic capital markets and strengthens stock exchanges, expanding listings for small and medium sized enterprises in particular a system that is able to efficiently allocate capital to unlock enormous opportunities in Africa, especially in food and agribusiness, natural resources, tourism, and industrial manufacturing. A system that is able to accelerate access to financing to unlock new economic opportunities for the youth, to grow youth-led businesses, and position Africa to take full advantage of its demographic dividend. A system that is able to work efficiently together to finance regional infrastructure at scale, including energy ports, airports, roads and highways, rail and ICT infrastructure to accelerate Africa's regional integration and competitiveness and assure success of the African continental free trade area. Their colleagues, such a system calls for pooling capital, greater use of syndications, co-financing, and increased use of risk instruments, such as guarantees to de-risk investments. Such a system also calls for collective ability to work as a unified system that is able to attract significant foreign direct investments to Africa and boost manufacturing capacity and industrialization of the continent. The COVID-19 pandemic has had massive impacts on Africa. Over 30 million people fell into extreme poverty in 2020. And it is estimated that another 39 million people will have fallen into extreme poverty by the end of 2021. Over 30 million jobs have been lost. The private sector, especially small and medium sized enterprises, have suffered particularly from lack of access to finance, and many of them face major risk of rebooting financing for their businesses. The debt levels have soared on the continent, with debt to GDP rising from 60% prior to the pandemic to 70 to 75% now. The continent faces huge fiscal deficits. The IMF estimates that the financing needs for sub-Saharan African countries could be $425 billion for 2021 to 2025. The African Development Bank moved quickly and launched a $10 billion crisis response facility to support countries to meet new fiscal challenges. The African Development Bank also launched a $3 billion fight COVID-19 social bond 
On the global capital markets, the largest ever US dollar denominated social bond in world history, which is listed on the London Stock Exchange, the Luxembourg Stock Exchange, and the NASDAQ. We project that African economies will recover gradually from the pandemic, with GDP growth expected to be 3.4% in 2021. Now that recovery is expected to be across the board for oil exporting countries, tourism dependent economies, commodity dependent economies, and for non-resource dependent economies. But dear colleagues, all of these depend on access to vaccines and tackling the issue of Africa's debt. To tackle the issue of vaccines, the African Development Bank is supporting the Africa Center for Disease Control with $28 million to strengthen its capacity. The bank plans to launch a major effort to build Africa's pharmaceutical industry to which we plan to invest $3 billion in the next 10 years. The bank is also currently working with partners on how to best support the financing of manufacturing of vaccines on the continent. Now, tackling the issue of debt must be our top priority. This is critical for overall financial market stability on the continent in the short and medium term. Without a resolution of Africa's $700 billion external debt, Africa's economic recovery will be like running up a steep hill, the backpack of, full of sand. Of particular concern is the $377 billion debt owed to private creditors and commercial banks. Total Euro bond debt alone was $169 billion at the end of 2019. Now think of the impact that this debt is already having. In 2019, Africa paid $221 billion for debt service which is 44% of the total government revenues of $501 billion in the same year. A number of efforts have been made to deal with the debt challenge, including the G20 Debt Service Suspension Initiative, otherwise known as DSSI, and the G20 Common Framework on Debt Treatment for Public and Private Debt. The DSSI, which has been extended to the end of this year, has only provided $4.5 billion, and that's only 3% or so of Africa's outstanding bilateral debt. Even then, the DSSI does not deal with reducing the quantum of debt of Africa, but only postpones debt service payments. Without doubt, the cost of debt service will continue to rise. The can is kicked down the road, but the reality will catch up soon when it's time to pay. The G20 Common Framework to deal with the public and private debt treatment has only seen three African countries, Chad, Zambia, and Ethiopia participate. However, rating agencies have been quick to look unfavorably on this, and Ethiopia was downgraded by Fitch ratings. The issuance of SDRs by the IMF offers a new ray of hope, if well used, to support the recovery process in Africa and also to address Africa's debt challenge. On these, dear colleagues, we should pursue two interlinked common approaches. First, the African Development Bank urges that a part of the SDRs be used to support public development banks to have additional resources to support countries to build back better, greener, and with climate and environmental resilience while creating green jobs for the youth. To further show our strong commitment to the Paris Agreement and climate change, the African Development Bank and the Global Center for Adaptation have launched the African Adaptation Acceleration Program to help to mobilize $25 billion for climate adaptation and resilience for Africa. As Africa's premier financial institution, with a AAA rating and a prescribed holder of the SDRs, the African Development Bank has the strong backing of all the public developing banks to support them through the use of SDRs. 
to help drive the achievement of the Paris Agreement and climate change actions on the continent. Their colleagues, second, a share of these SDRs should be used to pay down some of Africa's huge private commercial debt while bringing them into the G20 common framework. It is clear that if this is not done, when the debt payments become due from 2023, 2024, with bunching of payments, many countries will not be able to meet their obligations, which could trigger massive and widespread credit downgrades across Africa. It is time to take this action now to forestall what would be a payment crisis just down the road. As Africa's premier source of long-term capital, the African Development Bank, with its 100% exposure in Africa, could be severely affected. And so also with all the public development banks whose lending are mainly to governments. Such a situation must be avoided. A stitch in time, they say, saves nine. I therefore would like to call for the strong collective support of Africa's public development banks for these two strategic actions to assure financial stability of the continent and accelerate a post COVID-19 economic recovery that is inclusive, green and climate resilient. The African Development Bank will also be keen to work with you all particularly on two initiatives, which we have launched to also drive inclusive growth on the continent. The first is the Affirmative Finance Action for Women in Africa, otherwise known as AFAWA, an initiative to mobilize 5 billion US dollars in new financing in support of women businesses in Africa. As of today, we are working with 24 financial institutions in 15 countries, and we expect to expand that rapidly by 2022. Second, to tackle the huge challenge of youth unemployment on the continent and to support and unleash the creativity and businesses of young people, the African Development Bank will soon be launching Youth Entrepreneurship Investment Banks. These banks will be well-capitalized new financial institutions to create a new financial ecosystem to support and grow the businesses of the youth of Africa at scale. The African Development Bank will continue to play its leadership role to ensure the success of all public development banks. The success of all is the success of Africa. The outcomes of our meeting today are important for the May 18 conference in Paris, where I will be presenting our collective position as public development banks. I look forward to fruitful engagements and discussions. Together, we are stronger. Together, we deliver better. Together, we will be like a baobab tree whose roots will be deep enough to touch all parts of Africa and lift hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Thank you very much and welcome once again. Uh, thank you, Georgia. Uh, first and foremost, let me also thank my dear brother, Remy Rio, um, for an incredible job again, uh, bringing all of us together, uh, but also to thank Tabo for his impressive leadership. And thank you for that. Well, welcome. I can tell you that Remy and I will, will make sure that we can have a visit in common uh, to discuss finance in common together uh, with you. Uh, I'd like to thank all the distinguished participants for taking the time of your busy schedules uh, from around the world to join us for these uh, discussions uh, uh, today. Um, you know, what did we hear? Um, I start with what I heard really from Remy, and he made a very, very powerful point. He said, Africa is a global priority. And I think if Africa is a global priority, then working together to fast track Africa's development and Africa's recovery is critical as we deal with this global pandemic and recovery process. What I also heard was that without the financing common, we cannot fix it. That's what Cohen said. Uh, I think that was really very powerful the way in which we have to work together to fix the challenges 
And those challenges are many and the opportunities also many. We heard that when we need to connect countries and partners, in particular national, regional, and at a global level. Remy just mentioned that. The need for us to focus on countercyclical financial role that we all play. The need to realize that as we recover, we have to support preparation of projects so that we can do better origination. We heard it from all the panelists, the closeness that the, P, uh, the PDBs uh, have to countries, the granular knowledge that they have to be able to actually develop bankable projects. And for that, uh, it's very clear that we need to make sure that the public development banks have access to project preparation facilities to translate those ideas into bankable projects. We had the need for us, and actually indeed an agreement, that we will support alignment uh, to the Paris Agreement. The need for us to deploy new instruments. We had quite loud and clear about green bonds, expanding green bonds, and also facilitating Africa's access to the Green Climate Fund, which of course sometimes becomes challenging for many countries. Uh, it's clear that we need to also support countries uh, to be able to make success of their independent nationally development, uh, developed uh, uh, contributions, the INDCs that um, determine contributions, and that we need to ensure that we support them to make uh, a low carbon uh, 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 transition that we all are committed to. Of course, we must realize that Africa faces huge amount of challenges with climate uh, change and climate adaptation must continue to be at the top of what we do. And we heard quite a lot about the need to uh, exchange, expand the share of our financing that's devoted to climate adaptation and a focus on adaptation and resilient investing. Why not forgetting the critical role of biodiversity in all of our investment? We also heard about the fact that we need to leverage more, leverage our resources more, and also make sure that we provide technical assistance to the PDBs themselves, but to the entire financial ecosystem in Africa uh, that we support. We heard that, yes, in the environment where currency risk, exchange risk becomes a problem, that's need for us to promote greater use of local currency financing to mitigate those uh, uh, exchange uh, uh, currency uh, risks uh, and the foreign exchange risks that we have facing many of the PDBs. We heard about the importance of strengthening partnerships. And we had so many examples that were given today about how we all work together. In fact, I like what Ambrose Fiola said of EIB, European Investment Bank, when he said, the financing in common is good if we are together. And of course, we need to work together to reach the potential of Africa. That is the key, maximizing every potential for Africa, unlocking that. Of course, one key part of that potential is, trade is the issue of Africa continental free trade area. And we heard about the need to reboot trade finance for private sector, in particular for the small and medium-sized enterprises. We heard as well about our role to support industrialization of Africa, in particular, the small and medium-sized enterprises and to build their capacities. At the end of the day, we also heard very clearly that money is king. And we need to support, for example, uh, a lot the risk capital for the public development banks to deepen their ability to respond and to support Africa to grow back very strongly. And so I think it was very, very well put uh, by Tabo about the challenges that the PDBs uh, face in terms of governments, themselves, the liquidity problems that they have and the difficulty of getting additional resources. So we have to also strengthen the linkages between the public development banks and the small, the larger ones and the smaller ones um, uh, on the continent and also make sure that we deepen and strengthen our connections between uh, those up to the um, subnational and also uh, even connecting with the global. As we do all of our work, we need to focus on the recovery process so that we can, their recovery process is inclusive. It also supports the vulnerable population to allows us to create significant amount of jobs. And we must not, and we should not forget the microfinance institutions who are very, very critical for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises so that we leave no one behind. As we address these challenges, we need to work better together. As Remy said, let us stand with Africa, with the PDA, P, uh, public development banks working as a coherent 
system, as I said in the beginning. We need to work better together, and we will. We need to maximize linkages and partnerships, and we will, between local, regional, and global. It is clear that we will be able to achieve Africa's inclusive, green, climate resilient, and health resilient recovery process as we proceed. So as we close, and as we look forward, let's collectively be the biobab financing tree to deploy affordable financing all across Africa while paying attention to strengthening the governance and capacities to deliver, access to more affordable financing, tackle Africa's debt so that Africa can run faster, better. Let's grow our ambition we had as public development banks for a continent that desperately needs growth and recovery much faster than before. So I'd like to thank you very, very much for coming. And I want to say we are most grateful for your taking the time to share your ideas with us. Merci beaucoup. Et on se voit à Paris dans une semaine. Merci.